In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a home espresso machine like this Quick Mill Vitrano to use a regular five gallon water jug. This is a setup that anyone can do. It's not too expensive. It's certainly a lot cheaper than running your own water line or setting up a water softener. And you can do it even if you don't have the ability to extend your home plumbing. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is a nice bottled water. This is Crystal Rock Water from Home Depot. They refill it for about $6 a jug, and it is soft. I checked to make sure, that's important. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is this FlowJet pump. This uh, takes water from a five gallon water jug using a proprietary little plug they give you, and it outputs a quarter inch line uh, that you can just sort of use. That's a pretty typical line that people use for building these sort of home water filtration systems. So I'm gonna hook this FlowJet pump into this thing called an accumulator tank, which is going to buffer pressure. If you just take the output from the FlowJet in isolation and you try to feed it directly into the machine, it turns out it doesn't work. At least it didn't work for me uh, because the line doesn't quite have enough place to build pressure and so the machine always gets stuck. So instead I'm gonna take this output from the FlowJet and I'm gonna pump that into this accumulator tank. Then I'm gonna use that tank to feed the machine. I can see here where I'm plugging the proprietary connector I get, uh, the FlowJet people give you. I plug that directly into the little machine and then you hook up the uh, you hook up the switch that decides when there's water. So the FlowJet won't attempt to pump if there's not water, just not wear out the pump. All right, now you connect all this stuff up using these push to connect connectors, uh, typically called, uh, I think, Jonathan guest connectors. Um, so. That's the proprietary brand. They're just these hooked up connect fittings. You can get them at like Home Depot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little bit of line, about six inches of line that's gonna go between the flow jet, which just outputs a quarter inch line. You just push the little quarter inch line in, and then you're gonna connect this fitting, which is a half inch fitting, which is what this accumulator tank outputs, to then a quarter inch push to connect pipe. All right, and so I'm gonna hook this pipe up. I'll show you how we're gonna do that in a few seconds. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you get these things really, really, really tight. In fact, you probably wanna be using this, uh, this sort of Teflon tape stuff that uh, plumbers kind of are supposed to be using. Uh, so I didn't, it did actually leak for me a little bit. I really tried to monitor this. Uh, then I very carefully kind of watched and just tightened them a whole bunch. I uh, used some of this tape and then it kind of worked out. All right, the next thing you wanna do is uh, then you're just gonna hook up your flow jet. So I'm putting the flow jet, I'm actually just drilling it in and gonna screw it down to this uh, little cart that I got on Amazon. I'm using these particle board screws. They just kind of screw in and it's it's nice and stable. The flow jet has these nice little rubber feet uh, that sort of isolate out the vibration. So that's really nice. Makes it uh, so it doesn't transmit noise too much. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, hook up the accumulator right next to the flow jet so that the flow jet can pipe out to the accumulator tank. So first I'm gonna push in this push to connect fitting. This is this quarter inch pipe. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the flow or on the accumulator tank. I'm gonna hook that in and just push these all to connect. They fit nice and snug. And now I'm just gonna connect the accumulator tank so it sits right here and I can then feed the machine into, uh, into the accumulator tank on the other end. All right, now I should have been using a washer here. Since I filmed this, I have replaced uh, this accumulator tank. What I'm using, you can see it's just kind of sort of laying out there. That really should be using a washer. This was kind of shoddy work. Make sure you do that. And on the other end, I have this connector that goes into this uh, 3 8 inch pipe for my espresso machine. That's a pretty uh, f standard fitting. You can get converters that go from 3 8 inch pipe to these uh, sort of quarter inch lines. All right, so then you have to plug in the flow jet. It's just got a DC plug. All right, I have to admit, I was a little bit scared to have all this electric stuff around water. Um, so I always turn the flow jet off before I leave because I figure worst case scenario, if everything kind of goes bust, there's 0.7 liters of pressurized water, the flow jet turns off and it just kind of goes all over the floor. That would be too bad, but at least it wouldn't be the whole five gallon jug. All right. So I've got everything connected up here. I go the flow jet to the accumulator tank. The accumulator tank then goes and feeds the espresso machine, right? And you are supposed to pressurize these tanks. Actually, I should have done this before I filled it up. It was, uh, it was silly to even try once it was filled. So I think this is uh, not the kind of thing you should be doing. It was probably a bad idea to do this myself, um, but you wanna pump it up to 30, 40 PSI. All right, so let's try pulling a shot. 